Good morning, I'm Annie Larkin, the Associate Curator of Public Programs at the Ameren Museum. And welcome to Crossing Between Worlds, two Navajo weddings, one Navajo bride and groom with Charles Winters. Thank you to our members and donors who enable Ameren to provide free online programming and fulfill Ameren's mission to promote the knowledge and understanding of the native peoples of the Americas through research, education, conservation, and community engagement. To learn how you can assist Ameren in supporting its mission and programs by becoming a member or donor, please visit ameren.org. As a reminder, the Ameren Museum is open to the public with safety protocols in place. To plan your trip to Ameren, please go to visit the visit section of the Ameren website. On Saturday, April 17th, Ameren will host the free online lecture, Yesterday We Had a Beautiful Rain, with artist Glory Tachini Kempoi. Please visit our website, ameren.org, or the events section of our Facebook page for more details. And then on Saturday, April 24th, Ameren welcomes Steve Lexon for the free online lecture, What is Chaco Really? Again, please visit our website, ameren.org, or the events section of Ameren's Facebook page for registration details. All right. Charles D. Winters is a photographer and cinematographer who photographed and taught photography at State University of New York, Owenota. Three books of his documentary photography have been published, Too Wet to Plow, The Family Farm in Transition, The Catskills, Land in the Sky, and Crossing Between Worlds, The Navajos of Canyon de Chez. Amron was also delighted to have an exhibit of his work a few years ago. He is now retired and lives in Bisbee, Arizona. And thank you for joining us today, Charles. I'm looking forward to your presentation. Thank you. Okay. Uh, crossing between worlds, two weddings, one couple. Uh, before we get into the weddings, let me give you a quick tour of Canyon de Chez for those people that might not have ever visited or a refresher course. Canyon de Chez is up in the four corners um, and it's Chinle means that's where the river comes out of the canyon. Sele, which is about 28 miles up on the road is where the river comes into the canyon. It's in the four corners area. This is Spider Rock and Spider Woman uh, taught the Navajos how to weave and she also checks on children who misbehave and then the story that I've heard takes them to the top of Spider Rock until they behave themselves. This is White House. Uh, it's the only path down into the canyon that is open to the public without a guide. Um, if you can see back here in the corner, that's sort of white and they refer to it as White House. Mummy Cave, which you can see from one of the overlooks. Oops, excuse me, too many. Um, dog Rock, um, obviously it looks like a dog. Down in the left is a, a Hogan, and a Hogan is either six or eight sided uh, structure, and the door always faces east so that you can welcome the sun. Uh, pictographs are all over the canyon. Almost any place you go, you'll find them. Petrographs, I probably mispronounced that, are made with some sort of paint and they're usually under a, a ledge or in a cave uh, so that the rain and dust won't destroy them. Quite often you'll be walking along and you'll find pot shards and one of the things that always amazes me was right over here, hopefully everybody can see this, is they do coil basket, not baskets, um, pottery. And the coil is it is wound around and then is pinched so that it will be watertight. And several years ago, I found a piece, did not take it, uh, where the actual fingerprint of the person who made the pot was visible, which I, found exciting. This is a prickly pear and the little fungus that you see on there has a little bug underneath it called cochineal 
And that bug, if you squeeze it, is bright red and it's used for dyeing wool, but it's also used that the Anasazis would take enough bugs and put on their hands and make handprints on the walls. Kit Carson came through and one of his soldiers put his name and rank on the wall. That's another sad story. Um, we'll leave that one alone. Um, as I said, the <clears throat> Hogan is six or eight sided. I have to admit on this particular image, I had somebody pour a <clears throat> cup of water on the fire so that I could get the smoke, uh, but don't tell anybody. The cradle board is um, a great thing. I've watched several babies that were fussing get put on the cradle board, wrapped up in their blanket, and then laced up. And about the time they get laced up, uh, they're very, very quiet. Over in the corner, Grandma is making uh, fry bread dough. Uh, and if you haven't had fry bread, uh, please try it. And this is one of the original car seats with a roll bar. Young men would ride their ponies down this road and with a bow and arrow, they would try and get it stuck here in the, one of those cracks. If they did, you can see a couple of arrows that are still there, then they would get married. Otherwise they would become bachelors. The young woman on the right, her, her braids or tassels or whatever, if they're even, it means that she's single. If they're not even, it means that she is married. So at a dance, you can tell. Okay. So I got an invitation to come to the wedding. I immediately called and said that I would photograph the wedding if they wanted me to. Um, and a small piece of paper on the inside said there's three ways to get into the canyon. You can walk in, which is hot and long. You can ride in on horseback. If you're coming in by four wheel drive vehicle, bring two long boards and two large jacks. Obviously you're gonna get stuck. My wife and I got stuck twice and had to be pulled out before we got in. When we got to our motel, we set up and this is going to be our home for a couple, three days. Day one. <clears throat> this is before the wedding. Everything has to be brought in. We went up on the mesa, cut wood, and it needs to be thrown down about 800 feet, which limits uh, it's the fact that you have to cut it. That's pretty well smashed up by the time it gets to the bottom. Okay, down here in this green area is where the wedding's going to take place. Here is the brush arbor, the hogan is over here. Anybody that has um, had a daughter get married will know that it takes a lot of time. Here we've got two weddings that are going to take place. Everything has to be brought in. We're talking about making outhouses, bringing in water, generators, refrigerators, tables, chairs, napkins, silverware, uh, pots and pans. Everything had to be brought in. Uh, fortunately, they have a large family. pit is being um, dug and the fire will burn until there's a complete ashes in the bottom of it. Other things had to be done. We had to chink the, um, the Hogan. And as I was photographing, uh, Lupita, the mother, bridesmaid or her bride's mother, came by and said, you can photograph later. We have work to do. So part of my job was to help chink the, the Hogan. Mutton is gonna be served as the main meat. 
so the sheep had to be corralled and butchered and then wrapped in tin foil with wire on so that they can pull it out of the fire later. It is put now onto the coals, wet cardboard is put over the top of it, and then more wood is put on and it'll burn all night. Excuse me, somebody had to stay up all night uh, and keep putting fire and putting wood on the fire. In the background is dog rock again. Okay, we're now into day two. We're getting ready. Okay, well, I'll just show you a couple of things here quick. This is a brush arbor, which had to also be built. The Hogan stick is back here under the trees and outhouses and other things. One of the things, the first wedding is gonna take place in the Hogan. And so Lapita has brought in items that uh, are important to her and her family and the traditions. A small photo of the bride when she was young. This is a broom that is used to sweep out the floor. Traditionally, the floor on the Hogan is uh, just packed dirt. Mahate uh, for grinding corn. We'll see that in a little bit. Grandpa. And there's always a jokester. And this is John. Um, has a wicked sense of humor. Corn given by the spirit is not as for food and for ceremonial. We're now ready. Uh, on the floor, uh, right in here, would be a buffalo robe, and I believe this is a deer hide. Abalone is for strength. Uh, let me. Uh, it's a symbol of power and protection. Sorry, I had to go for just some notes. Lupita is satisfied. This is okay. We can now go to the wedding. This is the first wedding. Morning, nobody's arrived yet. One of the things I will point out is this is a cornfield. And the corn is up about a foot at this point. As it said, bring in a four wheel drive. You don't see any Mercedes or other small cars. <clears throat> We're dressed in our finest. Getting ready to put the bun in the, I'm sorry, I, I don't remember what they call this, but um, getting ready and dressed up. Ants of uh, Lupitas. Mom is getting Chris ready for the wedding. Uh, I think she pulled her hair at this point, if I remember correctly. While you're looking at this, look at the uh, turquoise. Um, and turquoise is generally given to um, the female when she's born, when she becomes a woman, when she has birthdays, when she gets married. Uh, it's just a traditional gift that is given to women. Some of her hands. Okay. Chris is now going to go into the Hogan and she's carrying uh, an ear of corn, uh, which she will grind. <clears throat> she now, this is a matate that she's grinding the corn with. And two of her aunts are on either side giving her advice and teasing her and having a pretty good time. And close up with the matate and corn. The medicine man who's going to be performing the ceremony. Um, I'm 
more ants. The groom is now riding in on the horse with some of his fellow family members. The mother is, uh, excuse me, let me take a drink first. This is the mother of the groom and they're now going to be approaching the mother's bride, mother's bride, bride of the mother. So they're meeting traditionally, this is the first time they meet, but uh, we're now crossing between worlds and uh, it's tradition. The, groom, the groom's mother will be giving the bride's mother gifts. Again, it's probably turquoise. Later on, <clears throat> the bride's mother would present sheep to the uh, groom's mother. Uh, I didn't see it. I just heard later that the sheep had gotten out and had gone all over the canyon, but apparently they rounded them up later. One of the things that happened as a photographer, I kept asking Lupita, what's going to happen? The traditional wedding <clears throat> that I photographed years and years ago, um, I knew what was going to be happening. What was going to be happening in the Hogan? I had no idea. And she said, well, you'll figure it out. We don't have time now. And I would ask her again. She said, no, 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 I haven't got time to tell you. So I never did find out exactly what was going to be happening. So the groom is coming in. The bride is covered. She'll be coming in, taking off. The mush that she has in the wedding basket is the corn that she had been grinding. To the right of the bride will be her family and to the left will be his family. <clears throat> One of the things that I didn't want to do is I didn't want to use flash to interrupt the ceremony. So I positioned myself beforehand and got where I wanted to be because I wasn't going to be able to move. <clears throat> it's probably 100, 105 degrees now inside the Hogan with all these people. And what happened was, as people came in, dust began to get into the air. So if you look on the right-hand side of your screen, you'll notice that it looks like a scrim or fuzzy. And that's the sunlight coming in and hitting the dust. So almost all of my photographs on the right-hand side <clears throat> are a little bit lighter than on the left, but there was nothing I could do at that point. bride and groom um, taking pinches of mush and they will eat from all, all four corners representing uh, the um, your journey through life i never can refuse to find a beautiful woman uh, it's just it's all that's all I can say. It's just amazing. <clears throat> after, <clears throat> after the ceremony from the medicine man, um, they tell stories and, <clears throat> and jokes and everything else. And these ceremonies, if there wasn't going to be a second ceremony, um, would go on for hours, apparently. And the other reason I didn't want to use flash was, well, I didn't want to interrupt the ceremony, but it didn't matter because almost everybody had their cell phone out using flash. Um, they're a good looking couple. After the ceremony, of course, out they come and time for some photos. Hmm. 
they had a flute player. It's very, you know, in the canyon, sometimes the flute will just uh, echo off of the <clears throat> off of the walls. It's just a beautiful, beautiful um, flute music that they have. Okay, that ended the first wedding. Now we have the second wedding. So the first wedding was traditional. The second wedding is now going to be Christian because the groom's uh, family was Christian and Lapita's was traditional Navajo. It was a great location for a wedding. The bride now will change in her changing room, a tent, which had to be brought in. And the groom now uh, is a Marine. Is a, uh, oh, I forget what they call <laughs> his entourage. Uh, anyway, they're walking to the brush arbor. And this is Lapita's mother. No, this is Lapita. Uh, being escorted in by a nephew. When they come. In the ceremony, as probably almost everybody has seen this before. <clears throat> And the whole group. Yeah. And then, of course, <clears throat> we have to have more photos. Look at the pickup trucks in the back. This is her bridesmaids. And his followers. Mom and proud dad. This would be the groom's parents and family. If you notice the Leaning Tower of Pisa here, um, I was the only one that happened to notice and I kept looking through the viewfinder and I kept thinking, I think the cake's moving. I think it's tilting. And pretty soon I was sure it was tilting and I had to say something and <clears throat> tell them to hurry up and cut the cake. These are sisters and an aunt, all very proud. One of the nice things about um, a lot of the work that I've done in other uh, countries is <clears throat> families that are extended. Um, I have a daughter who lives in, in Wisconsin and that's my extended family. And <clears throat> But to have this large family, they all take care of each other. Presents had to be unwrapped one at a time, of course. And then it's time to eat mutton and mutton stew and fry bread. And um, I'm not sure, I think everybody was waiting for that. I know I was. Then it's time to say goodbye. Everybody's going to be leaving and going back to their own homes, Hogan's. Uh, wherever they need to go. And this is a future generation of brides. Here's yours truly and my wife Marty. It was a long hot day. This is Dr. Jean Simonelli, anthropologist and author and without Jean and her expertise and friendship, none of this would have ever happened. Uh, she and I have worked on two books together and 
this is just, uh, it's a treat. I'd just like to thank the Ameren Museum for hosting the Zoom talks during the pandemic. I think it was a, a coup that they thought of this. Um, so that ends my part of the program, I think. Annie? Oh, thank you so much, Charlie. That was absolutely fantastic. And we do have some questions from our audience members. Um, in what other countries have you worked and photographed? Um, Ecuador, Africa, uh, of course, out in Arizona, I'm trying to think. You almost stumped me there. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yes, uh, British Honduras. There must be other places. I'm sorry. Um, a lot, a lot of the work has been done in third world nations, um, which I really, really enjoy. Um, one of the things that I, I might say is, oh, God, I can't remember his name. He always had a statement that he had never met a man he didn't like. And I changed that and to, I never met a person that I couldn't learn something from. So I never tried to judge another culture, which is difficult, um, but I try not to. Uh, try not to say, well, why don't they do it this way or that way or other things, um, to, but to try and learn something from those cultures. Okay. And are these photos available in book form or any other form? Um, yes, um, Crossing Between Worlds, um, I presume is still available. Um, photographs, um, well, um, I have some, <laughs> hundreds. Um, but to go online and buy photos, uh, I don't have a, a website to do that. Uh, you'd have to contact me personally. And um, one of our viewers noticed that there were fewer men than women during the Hogan ceremony. Um, were there more men during the Christian ceremony? And if so, why? Hmm. <laughs> Should I ask for the next question? No. Um, I had not noticed that. That was a good observation. I don't think there's any reason why not, uh, that there wouldn't be men. Um, have no answer for that. I'll, uh, next time I look, I'll uh, check. And with this next one, I'm going to combine two questions. And how did you meet Lupita and gain the trust of her family? Uh, uh, Dr. Simonelli uh, was a volunteer park ranger for one summer out there and we had just finished another book and she called me up and said would you like to <clears throat> do another book and um, she had befriended Lupita and they became very close friends uh, and over the years uh, we're looking at probably about 25 years that Jean and I have been going back and forth and working on projects. Uh, so it was, it wasn't that easy at first to gain the trust. Certain times, you know, you'd want to photograph something and somebody would say, well, you're just going to make money from us. And no, it probably cost me $5,000 to do this project. Um, so I never, never went into a project thinking that I was going to make money. Although the one thing I always wanted is I wanted to get uh, royalties. I wanted to get a royalty check because I remember being in, <clears throat> in school and somebody came in and spoke to us and he talked about royalty checks and how much money you made. So I thought, oh, it'd be, it'd be nice to get a royalty check. Well, I did get a royalty check. I think it was a dollar ninety-eight. Um, so I, I got my check, um, but that's the only money I've ever made on any books. Um, it's just the, 
the thrill of doing them. It's the thrill of meeting people, uh, seeing other cultures. Uh, and I did have one situation where <laughs> it was kind of interesting. We were at a song and dance competition and I told Lupita, I said, you know, if anybody, because everybody's dressed up. And I said to Lupita, I said, if anybody wants their portraits taken, I would, you know, take them. And nothing happened. And sort of towards the end of the ceremony, she said, so-and-so wanted to have their portrait taken. Well, it ended up, I ran out of film because more and more people wanted their portraits taken. Um, and the sun kept going down and the shadows kept getting harsher, but I kept shooting. Um, so it was interesting. It was interesting to uh, gain the trust. Um, they sort of have taken both Jean and I <coughs> into the families, um, which has been an honor. Um a young couple living locally in the Four Corners area, or did they return home uh, to the traditional home um, to marry? Can you repeat that? Of course. Were the young couple living locally, or did they return to their traditional homeland uh, to marry? No, no, they're both from um, Chinle. Um, yeah, they lived there probably within 10 miles of each other. And how long ago did the weddings, uh, did the weddings take place? Uh, I'm gonna have to say maybe eight years because um, Ryan went into the Marine Corps and I think he was in for four years. And yeah, I'd say maybe eight years ago. Do you still have the opportunity to visit Lupita and her family? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Um, <clears throat> I had taken my granddaughter on a 10-day trip a couple of years ago, and we spent four days <clears throat> on the Navajo reservation, um, showing her, you know, where I had been and, and looking, at, looking at the canyon and climbing up hand and toe holds and going through tunnels and eating fry bread. <laughs> yes, no, we're in, always in contact, telephone calls. Um, everything's closed down now because of the pandemic. Um, so a lot of the things that you might want to see on the reservation, you can't because they're closed down. Well, thank you so much, Charles. That was absolutely fantastic presentation as well as a very informative Q&A. And just to let our audience members know, uh, we will have a recording of this program that will be sent out to all of our registrants later today. Um, that will be on our YouTube channel. For something more immediate, we do have it posted on our Facebook page. So you can go there and re-watch the program immediately if you like. I have many people who wanna look at the photographs again, Charles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Charles, thank you so much for spending your time with us today and sharing your beautiful photographs with our audience. We really appreciate it. Thank you, and I thank the museum. Oh, well, we appreciate you being a good friend of ours. And thanks to all of our participants today, all of our registrants today. We look forward to seeing you again at a future Amarant online program. Thank you. Bye-bye.